everyone and welcome back to Humble Heart Horsemanship. My name is Sabrina and in today's video I'm sharing with you some helpful tips and tricks to successfully purchasing a horse at a horse auction. I do need to say a quick little disclaimer before we get into the rest of the video and that is that unless you are a very experienced horse person, you need to bring someone with you that's very knowledgeable. Buying a horse at a horse auction is unlike any other horse purchasing situation you will probably ever be in and it's very very different and also very challenging. There are so many horses at horse auctions and they are all there for various reasons. Some are there because they have physical issues, they have soundness issues, others are there because they have behavioral vices and a lot are also really good horses that just need to find a new home and a new place to land. But purchasing a horse from a horse auction can be very risky unless you are a knowledgeable horse person. So if you're not, make sure that you're bringing someone with you who is knowledgeable and is going to help you with the whole purchasing process. For those of you who don't know, I purchased Gemini, my four-year-old appendix gelding, from the Eugene Horse Auction in August of 2020. I was looking for a second horse at the time and it was during COVID, it was a weird time to be in the market for a new horse and I'd always wanted to go to this auction and I also had a few friends who had successfully purchased some really incredible horses from this auction. So a few months before I spent a lot of time looking at the Eugene Horse Auction catalog, just seeing all the horses that were being uploaded onto the online catalog and onto the Facebook forums and what I did was I basically compiled a whole list together of the horses I was interested in and then when I went to the Eugene horse auction I was able to go into the auction house look at all the horses with my little list cross off the ones that were not a good match and narrow it down and I ended up purchasing Gemini I won his bid and ever since August of 2020 he's been mine and I had never purchased a horse from a horse auction before. It was a completely new experience for me. And of course, with it being a new experience, I learned so much from it. And I really wanna share all of my knowledge that I learned from that situation with you guys so you can have a successful purchasing situation if you do decide to purchase a horse from a horse auction. My first recommendation for you guys is to make a specific list of the things you're looking for in a horse. You need to figure out you know, whether you want a mare or a gelding or if you're open to either or, um, if there is a certain breed that you would prefer versus another breed, uh, the horse's age, the horse's height, what their training background has been. All of those things need to be considered because if you just go into that auction house and you don't have a list or even somewhat of a detailed idea about what you want, you're gonna get distracted by looking at all the horses. And you also may end up leaving with a horse that is not a good fit for you. Number two is to do your research about the auction that you are going to. You can easily go on to the auction's website. A lot of them have Facebook forums and figure out the date of the auction, the time, uh, look at the catalogs of all the horses, figure out parking, figure out um, fees, get your bidding number, all that kind of stuff needs to be thought of before you go to the auction so it's not stressful when you're there and you're all set to go. So if you find a horse that you love and you know that it's a good horse for you, everything's all set up and you can just start bidding on that horse when the time comes without any interruptions. Number three is to try to find someone, it doesn't matter if it's someone on like a Facebook forum or if it's someone that you personally know who has gone to the auction before and ask them for their personal tips about going to the auction and how they should go about doing it. I had a friend who had gone to the auction recently and she wrote me an entire very, very detailed Facebook message with all the different things that I needed to know about the auction and some of her tips were really, really helpful. So try to find someone who's gone and ask them for their advice. Number four is to make a list of the horses that you are interested in. A lot of horse auctions will post their catalogs online, sometimes in print, and you can use either of those resources and then create a little separate list of the horse's tag numbers that you're interested in. So when it's auction day and you're ready to go in there, you know what tag numbers you're, you need to go look at because you already have your little list set up. 
Number five is to bring positive and realistic people with you to go to the auction. I say positive and realistic because you want positive people. You don't want negative people that are going to be complaining about being at the auction for you know how long you're taking or because of the heat or the cold or the smells or anyone who's just going to rush you because purchasing a horse is a very, very, very serious and a very committed decision that you have to make. So you want people that are going to be supportive and encouraging and loving towards you while you're making these decisions. And then you also want to bring people who are realistic, meaning you don't want to bring that friend that has like too many horses and is always buying more horses because you want people who are going to be, you know, influencing you in a positive way and pushing you towards horses that are realistic for where you're at and what you're actually looking for. I brought both my mom and my sister with me when I went to the horse auction back in August of 2020, and they were the best people that I could have had around me. Number six is that when you arrive, you need to first go into the office and ask for a map of the auction house. A lot of times horse auction houses will have these maps where they're going to list the individual corrals slash stalls slash pens where the horses are at. So if you're interested in number 64 and you go up to the office and you're like, hey, can I please have like a paper copy of the map? They're gonna give you the map and then really easily you can locate 64 and just go find the horse instead of wasting time walking through all these different aisleways trying to find number 64. Also, while you're in the office, make sure that you have your bidding number all set up and that you're all registered for the auction too, because that's a really important part, because if you don't have that, you can't bid on a horse. Now at number seven, we're going into the actual content of physically viewing the horses that you're interested in. My biggest tips is to make sure that you go back and visit the horses that you're interested in multiple times. Number eight is to closely evaluate how the horse looks and is responding to the environment it's in. Those of you who haven't been to a horse auction before understand that horse auctions are oftentimes very stressful and very loud places. And so naturally when you put a horse in that environment, they're going to react in some way. So if you go up to a horse in an auction and the horse just doesn't look fully there, there's a good chance that the horse possibly could be drugged um, or something else is going on with the horse. A really good tip that I liked doing when I was at the auction, you can do to any horse to kind of check if it's drugged or if something's going on, is walk up to the horse's face and um, quickly, unexpectedly, move your hand across uh, the horse's eyes like just in front like this and if the horse doesn't blink or doesn't even move a little bit mm, could be a chance that there's something going on with that horse but those are important details that you need to be paying attention to so you need to closely be evaluating how the horse is looking how they're responding um, really paying attention to your gut intuition for evaluating the horse's condition when they're there. That can help prevent you from purchasing a horse that has possibly been drugged or has some other issues. You also can do a skin pinch test for dehydration um, to see if the horse is being taken care of well. Uh, when I went to the Eugene Horse Auction, one thing that baffled me a little bit and I thought was not okay was it was uh, the middle of August, very, very hot out, and a lot of these horses in their corrals were uh, fully tacked up, tied up to a fence panel, and a lot of them did not have water at all. So if you see a horse that doesn't have water, to be honest, it can tell you a lot about the owner and how they take care of that horse. You also want to be looking at the horse's hooves. If possible, pick up the horse's hooves, examine their hooves, examine their legs, examine their backs, their bodies, everything you can do to evaluate the horse. You don't want to miss out on any of these things because if you're not closely examining the horse's body or how the horse is acting, you could easily go home with a horse that has been drugged or has soundness issues or has a big swollen leg or something that you missed and then that's going to obviously affect you and what you could possibly do with the horse and all that kind of stuff. So be diligent in examining the horse. Number nine is a really, really important one, you guys, okay? And that is 
seen the horse being ridden. Now, here's the thing. A lot of auctions do not have riding arenas or any place where you can see the horse being ridden. And a lot of them just have a tiny corral panel. That's where they bring the horses out and they're in the pen and that's when everyone starts bidding on the horse. But the thing is, is especially if you are purchasing a horse there, you want to have as a riding horse. If you don't see it being ridden, it can be very risky. Um, you know, the horse could have behavioral issues under saddle. The horse may be advertised as something that it is not. It may not be safe. Uh, I remember when I went to the auction, one of the horses I was interested in was this uh, beautiful paint horse gelding. And in his sale ad in the online catalog, it had said that he was a bomb-proof, kid-safe horse. And <laughs> I was so glad that I got to see the horse being ridden because what happened was this gal brought the horse out to the arena and she went to mount him from the ground and she barely swung her leg over and the horse took off bucking. And not just like, oh, a little bit of some bucking, but like bucking bronc, very, very dangerous down the arena wall. And <laughs> when she fell off, um, she went to go collect her horse's reins and she kept saying, oh, it was just because I accidentally tapped the horse with my boot when I got on. And she just kept saying it and she was really, really embarrassed. And everyone was like, oh, like everyone was shook. And so that's just like one prime example of if you don't see the horse being ridden or being worked, you don't really know what you're getting, right? And it's already risky when you're purchasing a horse from a horse auction because most auctions do not allow you to ride the horse before you purchase them. Some do, but it's fairly rare. So for that horse, they were advertising him as a kid safe horse, but if a kid could even mount him from the ground and accidentally tap him with the kid's boot on the horse's butt without the horse doing a bucking bronc show, then you know someone could have very easily purchased that horse for their kid, got it home, found out it has a severe bucking problem, the kid could get hurt, you could get hurt, the horse is now in a home where it needs more training or it can't be used, and it's a domino effect of things that can go wrong. So if you can see the horse being ridden and being worked, try to do that as much as you can. When I was at the horse auction, there were a lot of horses I was really interested in, but I wasn't able to see them being ridden. And in my gut, I felt uncomfortable with the idea of purchasing a horse that I could even see someone ride for just a little bit, you know? I was so happy when my horse, uh, Gemini, he was named Flash at the time, but I was really happy when I walked out to the arena and I was viewing all the horses and I got to see him being ridden by his trainer and his owner. And so I got to see him being ridden for maybe like five to like 10 minutes. And after I saw that, I felt so much better about making the choice to bid on him when the live auction began because I already could see that he was broke under saddle. I saw him being ridden and I was able to make a safer and a smarter decision because I did see him being ridden. Number 10 is to ask the owner questions. Now, if you're an introvert like me, asking the owner questions may feel a little bit daunting. You may be like, I don't know if I wanna like go up to a stranger and ask questions, but please do. Here's why, okay? Number one, when you're purchasing a horse, this is a huge commitment. This is a very big decision. And if you can't even you know, go up to the owner and ask the owner questions about the horse, then you're gonna miss out on some valuable information about the horse. You can learn a lot about you know why the horse is there at the auction, among other things. So do try to locate the owner and ask them whatever questions you have. The last and possibly the most important piece of information I have for you is to always, always trust your gut. This applies to everything in life, but especially when it comes to purchasing a horse because you know there were a lot of horses I saw at that auction house that I you know looked at and in my gut I was like mm, there's something wrong with this horse or there's something that's not right here and I just crossed the horse off of my list so you know you're not being superstitious by doing that we need to be paying attention to how our gut is reacting to something and when I saw Gemini I had a really good gut feeling about him about how he was being handled by his owner, how he was ridden, how he was acting in the little pen that he was in. Uh, Gemini was in this really tiny corral pen with another young horse about his age. 
And this other horse was being so pushy to Jem. He was, you know, kind of pushing him up against the corners, like biting at Gemini's neck and just being a little stinker. And Gemini stood there so passively and so sweet, letting the horse do all this stuff to him. And it was also really helpful for, for me to see him and how he interacted with other horses because you can tell a lot about a horse's personality based on how they interact with other horses. And I could tell that Gemini was a very uh, passive and very gentle spirited horse from that. So that helped me make the right decision too. So be thorough, go with an educated horse person if you're not that person yourself yet. And also always trust your gut intuition. It will not steer you wrong. Be thorough, go with an educated horse person unless you are that educated horse person yourself and always trust your gut intuition. I wish you guys the best of luck with purchasing a horse at a horse auction. It was a very educational and very wonderful experience and out of going to that auction, I got the horse of my dreams who is my forever horse. So. I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure that you scroll down, hit that like button, and subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!